following story is titled Woman's Wiles. It's about love. The tale of a respected United States Senator, Renee Madison, who gets involved with a married woman. <laughs> Disgraceful. But, as they would say in Washington, D.C., that's par for the course. I'd like to speak to someone in homicide. Hello? Yes. Uh, this is Senator Renee Madison. I'd like to report a murder. The victim's name is Angela DuPont. I shot her. She's right here in my house. I'll wait here while you send over some detectives. My address is... <laughs> Are you Senator Renee Madison? Yes. I'm Detective Burton, 9th Precinct Homicide. You, you called about a murder? Yes. She's in the library through there. Yeah, this is Burton. Yeah, send over the meat wagon. No, no need for uh, an ambulance. She's beyond that. Right. Senator, why don't you tell me what happened here? It's obvious. I shot her. There's the pistol. You're admitting you shot her. Senator, I have to caution you about your rights. Detective Burton, I'm a lawyer. I know my rights. Anything I say, etc. Yeah. Senator, before I take you down to the station, you want to tell me what happened here? Have a seat, detective. I'll tell you everything. Off the record? Yeah, off the record, uh, but I, I can't imagine why a prominent man such as yourself would do such a thing. Careful one, detective? Uh, no, I'm on duty. It's a long story. Go ahead, just one. Well, I won't tell. I, I don't know. Go ahead. It's a hundred years old. A hundred years old? Must be, must be good. May you love like you've never been hurt, dance like no one is watching, and drink like a true Irishman. Mm, good. Oh, why don't you tell me what happened, Senator? Uh, women. What do you say about women? Can't live with them. Can't live without them. Well, there are no conjures more subtle in taking us in every available opportunity, with or without reason, often for the sole pleasure of playing tricks on us. 
And they play these tricks with incredible simplicity. They play tricks from morning till night, and they all do it. The most virtuous, the most upright, the most sensible. They always manage to extricate themselves from the difficulty so cunningly by means so simple and sly that we gape with amazement when by chance we discover them. We say to ourselves in a stupefied state of mind, how is it we did not see this till now? What was her name? Angela DuPont. And her relationship to you? Take a wild guess, detective. Mm. Mistress. No, I'd say more like my seductress. Well, Senator, you know it takes two to seduce. Touche. Any relatives that you know of? Would a husband count as a relative? So she's married. Now, how did you meet her? Well, I'll tell you about it. For posterity. I was outwitted by an ordinary, uneducated woman in a comic and thoroughgoing fashion. Every morning I was in the habit of taking a walk through the park, and each day I noticed this charming woman would pass me. We'd smile and nod and go along our way. She seemed to give me a side glance as she passed me, but these women, they give you all sorts of looks you never can tell. And this woman, was she the deceased? Yes, Angela. I was having breakfast in the park one day in the cafe, and I saw her sitting at a table reading a book. First time I've seen you in here. First time I've come in here. Do you mind if I sit down? Be my guest. You know, we pass each other every day. And I don't even know your name. Angela DuPont. Angela. Very pretty. My name is Renee Madison. And is there a Mr. DuPont? Yes. Your father, I hope. No, my husband. Oh. Why are all the pretty ones married? Married, yes. Dead, no. Marriage is a state of mind. And if you don't mind, then neither do I. Why are all the sexy men single? What book are you reading? 100 Ways to Seduce a Man. And have you learned any? Yes, 99. One more to go. Well, practice makes perfect. Is there a Mrs. Madison? Yes. Is she your wife? No, she's my mother. What does your husband do? He's a government clerk. Not very bright. Travels a lot for his work. So, she came on to you. Well, we sort of came on to each other. We met for breakfast every day after that. She told me that her life was a sad one and that in it pleasures were few and cares were numerous and a thousand other things. I told her who I was, partly through thoughtlessness and partly, perhaps, through vanity. She pretended to be much astonished. Well, how could she have not known who you were? She said she didn't follow politics, had no interest in it. I don't blame her for that. All right, so you, so you met at the cafe every morning. Seems harmless. Well, one day she called at my house. She came to see me. She said she was thinking of me, passing by, and thought she would see if I was home. And I bet I can guess what happened next. For three months, I saw her every morning without growing tired of her for a second. So well was she incessantly able to give variety and zest to her physical attractiveness. But one day, I noticed her eyes glowing with suppressed tears. What's wrong? It's nothing. Nothing. You're crying, agitated, and nothing's wrong. Please tell me, what's the matter? 
My husband will be furious. He'll have to know about us. Angela, for God's sakes, what is wrong? I'll have to tell him about us. Why? Because, because I'm pregnant. Pregnant? Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. So what's the problem? You're married, are you not? Yes, but my husband has been away in Italy for the past two months and he won't be back for quite a while. Well, what are you going to do? What am I going to do? You mean, what are we going to do? Yes, of course. I meant us by all means. You're not trying to shirk your obligation, are you? Of course not. Are you sure I'm the father? Are you suggesting there's somebody else? No, I merely meant, is it possible that it could be your husband? No. You must go and see him immediately. Perhaps after you've been together, he'll suspect nothing. He'll think the child is his. You must not say anything to him about us. It would ruin us. My career, your reputation. What are you more concerned about? My reputation or your career? Let's be practical here. It would do neither one of us any good if the truth were to come out. I thought you loved me. I do, but you should go see him. Yes, but... I understand. The expense of the trip and things? I was determined, at any cost, to get out of my responsibility. You're a real peach of a guy. Let's be real, Detective. What good would it have done if the truth had come out? So what did you do? I gave her an envelope with enough cash to cover the trip and all expenses to the baby. How she explained the money to her husband, I had no idea. And to be frank, I didn't care. Did she go to her husband? Eight days later, I received a letter from Genoa. The following week, I received a letter from Florence. Then letters arrived from Leghorn, Rome, Naples. She said she was in good health, her husband suspected nothing, and she would not return until after the baby was born. At about the end of eight months, I received a letter from Venice. It said, it's a boy. So she had the baby. Well, that's where the twist comes in. Twist, what do you mean? There's more to the story. Go on. You've got my attention. Sometime after, she came to my home one morning. Angela. Oh, Renee, I've missed you terribly. What are you doing here? I didn't know you returned. You sent me no letter. What? Aren't you happy to see me? No, it's just that I wasn't expecting you. Have you replaced me with someone else already? Oh, no, it's not that. I'm happy to see you. Oh, this is just such a surprise. I wasn't expecting you. Here, let me look at you. You look as beautiful as ever. Where's your husband? He's abroad. Don't you even ask about the boy? Oh, yes, of course. How is he? And where is he? He has a name, and it's Madison. Madison? Yes, I named him after you, his father. Madison is fine and he's at home with me. I have a nanny watching him. She often spoke to me about the child, but I scarcely listened to what she had to say about it. It didn't concern me. Every now and then I would place rather large sums of money in her hand and tell her, here, put this away for him. So you help pay for the child? Of course. It went on for two more years. She would see me in the mornings, and sometimes she would stay for a week when she could. What about her husband? Well, whenever he was here, she would come by only when she could get free. And then when he was gone, we would see each other more often. Well, what about the boy? Did you ever see him? No. Sometimes she said I didn't care about him. I didn't want to see him. She said it caused her much grief. Did you care? I guess I did. Maybe I didn't want to get attached. You know, out of sight, out of mind. But finally, at last, I was harassed by her so much that I promised to go the next morning when she took the child to the park. Did you go? 
At the moment I was leaving the house, I was stopped by a sudden apprehension. What if I were to get fond of this tiny being, of whom I was the father, my son? I was ready to go, and then I decided, nah, to be wiser not to go. And suddenly my door flew open and my brother entered the house. Renee, read this note I just received in the mail. Warn Senator Renee Madison, your brother, that the little tramp he has seen is shamelessly laughing at him. Let him make some inquiries about her. When did you get it? I just received it in the mail. It was no return address. Other than you, I've never told anybody about her. I've never mentioned it to anyone, not even my wife. I figured it was your business. I'm not getting involved. In what way could she have deceived me? Maybe she has other lovers. What does it matter to me? She's young and pretty, and I ask nothing more from her. She seems to love me, and as a matter of fact, she doesn't cost me much. I really don't understand this letter. Yes, but you've been paying all these years for the child. Well, for my part, I don't want to concern myself any further about the matter. Well, what are you going to do about this letter? If someone knows, it could get out to the press. Do me a favor. You have some friends in the police department? Yeah, I know a few detectives. Ones you can trust? Yes. Would you ask them to discreetly find out what they can about her? I'll ask them to make a few inquiries. OK, thanks. Do you know what detectives he spoke to? No. But even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. I'm not looking to get anyone into trouble here. Just thought I'd ask. Did he find out anything? Yes. What news did you find out? The detectives? Who were very discreet about their inquiries, found out that her husband was a clerk in the home department. He had regular habits, a good reputation, Moreover, a thinking man, but married to a very pretty woman whose expenses seemed somewhat extravagant for her modest position. That was all. Could they find out anything about her? No. Not really. She had no record, and they didn't want to ask questions because I had asked them to be discreet. Very good. I wish I could find out more about her. I was thinking, if you don't mind... I could find out more about her. How? Leave that to me. I thought you didn't want to be involved. No, I didn't. But I changed my mind. I, I don't want to see you hurt. Besides, what are brothers for? What did he find out about her? He went to her residence on a day when she was out. Oh. Straight to the horse's mouth. Gutsy, I must admit. I had no idea that was his plan. That was a smart move on his part. That way you couldn't be accused of complicity. Knowing she was out, he succeeded with the help of a few greenbacks in talking to the maid. Uh, she was very informative. Here, this is for you. Thank you, sir. Very generous. As I said, this conversation never took place and no one needs to know. I understand. What can you tell me about Mr. and Mrs. Dupont? Well, the Mrs. is a very worthy woman and her husband a worthy man. Not proud, not rich, but generous. And how old is their little boy now? Why, she has not got any little boy. What? Little Madison. She has no children. She never did. I mean the child she had while she was in Italy two years ago. Italy? She has never been in Italy. She has not left here in the last five years. She's never traveled abroad. 
No, her husband travels for his job, but she has always remained here. I just want to be perfectly clear about this. Have you been here for five years? Yes, sir. I am the only help they've ever had. No one else. I'm here all the time. And there's no child, no nanny, and Angela has never traveled? No, sir. Oh, one last question. Has she ever had any male guest calling on her? No. She's had some female friends and her sister. There are times when she didn't come home for a day or two, but what she does and where she goes is none of my business. I keep my mouth shut. Thank you. Are you sure? That's exactly what the maid told me, dear brother. She has been making a fool out of you. I can't believe this. I must hear it from her. What good will that do? Just let it be. Say good riddance to her. No. I want to hear it from her. I want you to go tell her to come here tomorrow. Tell her I will give her $10,000. If she's deceived me, I will never see her again. In fact, I'm beginning to find I have had enough of her. Will you believe it? I had been grieving the night before because I had a child by this woman. And now I was irritated, ashamed. I wanted no more of her. I found myself free, released from all responsibility, from all anxiety. And yet I felt myself raging at the position in which I was placed. Well, if it's any consolation, Senator, you're not the first sap to be taken in by a dame, nor the last. But your brother was right. You should have left it alone. I couldn't. Call it pride, self-esteem, gratification, whatever. I, I just couldn't let it go. Did she show up in the morning? No. She didn't come until this evening. I thought she wasn't going to show up. And finally, she came. Hey, darling, I've missed you terribly. What's the matter? I sent for you to come this morning. I couldn't. I had to take little Madison to the doctor. He had a fever. Oh, and how is he? Feeling any better? Yeah, I left him with the nanny. With the nanny, huh? <laughs> Why didn't you bring him here with you? Well, I felt he'd be more comfortable at his Stop! own- Stop! Why don't you stop all the lies? What lies? The lies! Tell me the truth! What are you talking about? I know you didn't have a child by me. No, I have no child. And I also know you've never been to Italy. No, I've never been to Italy either. Here, here's the money I promised you. Now take it and get out of my sight. Oh well. So much the worse. I had grown rather fond of you. Look here. Why all the tricks, all the lies? Complicating it with a sham journey to Italy and the child. My, 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 how spiteful you are. Did you really think a poor little woman of the people, like me, nothing at all, could have kept for three years on my hands a senator, a man of wealth and fashion, if I hadn't gone to such great lengths? You fool. Did you really think I'd leave my husband for you? I have expensive tastes, desires for things that only money can buy. You were just a means to an end. Oh, well. It's over now. Couldn't last forever. Nevertheless, I was successful at it for three years. You will remember me, you poor, pathetic fool. 
But you had a child to show me. Yes, my sister's. She lent him to me. I bet she was the one that gave me away. And all those love letters from Italy? Oh, well, now that was a bit of poetry. I had a friend who was taking a tour of Italy, and I asked her if she wouldn't mind mailing those letters, which I had conveniently written in advance. She just thought I was playing a trick on you. Boy, you played your cards perfectly. You set me up as a patsy. I meant nothing to you. And to think, I thought you loved me. <laughs> loved you? Grow up, you stupid idiot. You would have dumped me sooner or later anyway. And all that money you gave me, well, that just served to clear your conscience. You know, you're a little slut. Somebody should teach you a lesson. I wouldn't. I will shoot first and then cry rape. Go ahead. I don't think you have the nerve to pull that trigger. Go ahead. Come on. I didn't think so. Now, get out of my sight. Well, there, Detective, you have it. The whole story. So, this is her gun. She pulled it on you. Yes, it was an accident. I tried to take it away from her. Well, sorry, Senator, but I'm still going to have to book you, take you into the station. You can call a lawyer. They'll probably charge you with manslaughter or call it self-defense. Yes, Detective, I understand. Uh, do you mind if I have one more drink? Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, we'll send them right in. Yeah, I understand. We'll be right out. That was my partner. He's outside. Connor's out there, too. And the press. They got tipped off. Here, Detective, I won't tell. Thank you. You know, there's no happiness in love except at the end of an English novel. Good. Well, detective, shall we go? Listen, no need for handcuffs. I don't think you'll run. And besides, the press is out there. No need to embarrass you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Needless to say, the senator was released. No charges were filed, and he went on to get reelected again. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again. <laughs>